Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching and today we are going to cover the two most popular ways of solving a plus b to the power of n. Now I know you guys all know this but I just want to share it with you guys. Let's do the most popular way. The most popular way is to use combinatorics. So we can change a plus b to the power of n into a plus b times a plus b times a plus b and there are n brackets to get this all we need to do is we can take out i number of b's from the n brackets so then it will become b to the power of i and the a power will have to be n minus i so then it will become b to the power of i times a to the power of n minus i. We can see how, we, how many ways we can make this. So we know that it's just c and i. And from here, we can just add the sigma. We can sum them up into this. So this is the most popular way of solving that. And then now I'll cover solving this using mathematical induction. I will skip step one of mathematical induction because it will obviously be true. You guys can try that yourselves. So now I'll just skip right to step two. So step two. Step two is to assume it's true when n equals k. So then we can just plug it in. K, just change all of the n's into k's. And step three, will to prove it's true when n is k plus one. <coughs> we can change this a plus b to the power of k plus one into a plus b to the power of k multiplied by a plus b. And based on step two, we can change this into this because we assumed it's true. Or multiply by a plus b. And from here, we can open the brackets to get a times this plus b times this. And now we can multiply the a into here and similarly we can multiply the b in here. This will now become a to the power of k plus 1 minus i. And this will stay the same. This will stay the same. And this will become b to the power of i plus 1. What do we do from here? Hmm. We need the first term from this thing. So then why don't we let i equal 0 and see what the first term of this is? So when i equals 0, this is 1 and this is a to the power of k plus 1. That's good, right? It's the same first term. So then why don't we take out the i equals 0 term and then you add from i equals 1 to k. Yeah. We can take out the i equals 0 term, so then it becomes a to the power of k plus 1 plus sigma. Now, it's not from i equals 0 to k, it's from i equal 1 to k because we took out the term for i equals 0. And we can copy all of this. Now, I'm going to show you how to deal with the second sum. And I'm going to teach you guys a little technique about how to deal with this. So I'm going to let j equal to i plus 1. If j equals i plus 1, then when i equals 0, we know that j will equal to 1. And when i is k, we know j will be k plus 1. So then we can change it all to j. So then sum j is from 1 
to k plus 1. And then still c k i is j minus 1. And this will be b to the power of j since we let j equal to i plus 1. So from here, I'm just going to copy these first two terms. From here, I'm going to get the last term. So the last term is when j is equal to k plus 1. And here, if j is k plus 1, then this will be 1. And this will be b to the power of k plus 1. So then, it's still the sum j going from 1, but not to k plus 1 because we took it out. So it's just going to k now. And then we copy the inside. We have k. I'll write the plus 1 first, and then I'll minus the j, b to the power of j, plus the last term, which is b to the power of k plus 1. We have the first term here, and the last term there. But then now we just need to deal with the middle terms. I'm going to change this j back into i, because it doesn't really matter, it's just a variable. You can easily change it to any variable. I can change it to x if you want me to. You see, this sum and this sum is the same. And look, the input is also the same. But then the only difference is the c's. So then why don't we add these two sums together, but just take out this term. From here, let's recall something. Let's recall the Pascal's formula. The Pascal formula says that this c plus this c will equal to, so this c plus this c will equal to c k plus 1 i. So we should just use this formula and change this into that. From here, I can change this into this using the Pascal's rule. So then it will become. And when I write this, I'll put this at the front here. Now, I'll write again what we had to prove. We had to prove that a plus b to the power of k plus 1 equal to... You see, the input is exactly the same, but the only thing different is the sigma. Let's recall, this was when i equals 0, this was when i equals k plus 1. So then why don't we put these two terms in? So then it will become i equals 0, since this is 0, to k plus 1, since this is k plus 1. Right? And then we can add it in. This and this. They're the same. So we proved it. So, therefore, this is true by mathematical induction. And I'll draw the little square here. This little technique can also be used to prove Leibniz's nth order derivative and I can explain that to you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you like content like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.